Why they can find cannabis, you must have to work it out for themselves. The ETs aren't allowed to intervene. Interesting take, and uh, I've always wondered about that with the yeah. uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki occurring in 1945, uh, and then Roswell in 47. It took basically two years for them to realize what was going on and get here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, the time runs a little bit differently up there. Um, yes, I think they just waited to see what impact it was going to have, and obviously it had, had a very detrimental impact yeah. right through. Um, the galaxy, you know, far, far worse than, than just down here. And so, you know, something had to be done. Judy, how do you handle skeptics who simply say, this didn't happen to you, you haven't got a contact to you, you're just imagining me? Oh, they don't worry me in the least. Everyone's just wanting to see their own opinion. I don't totally understand where skeptics are coming from, um, because until you've experienced this stuff personally, it's very, very hard to explain it to somebody else, and I can understand why people have so much trouble accepting it. Because sure. we've had rain push down here by 3D. Um, a lot of people cannot see past 3D. Left brain, 3D consciousness. Um, so to start opening up to higher dimensional frequencies is extremely hard for some people. So, you know, uh, and, and I can see skepticism as based in fear. That's the bottom line. Again, we've got the old fear and love scenario. And that's where skeptics are coming from. They don't really, at some deeper level of their being, they're afraid to open up. Maybe it's an ego thing, maybe it's, you know, I don't know why. You know, there'd be a number of reasons, but that's what it is. What are your thoughts on reincarnation, Judy? Oh, absolutely, for sure. I actually remember past lives. So. You've had many, as you were saying, huh? Yes, I, I started remembering past lives when I was a child. Um, and of course back then I was, you know, being educated in a Catholic school, so <laughs> um, it was never brought up. But um, yes, absolutely, that we definitely reincarnate. I mean, that's, that's, reincarnation is our path to oneness. Do we reincarnate to be an earthling or do we sometimes end up on a different planetary system? Oh, look, we can end up anywhere. We reincarnate according to the soul lessons that we need to learn. So, yeah, we can reincarnate down here or we can reincarnate elsewhere. It, should, it all depends on what we need to learn. Have the Zetas answered the question about who are we, what are we, what's God for themselves? Yes, yes, they have more understanding. The Greys um, span quite a few levels of the, of the human ladder, so some have more understanding than others. Um, the Zetas have a deeper understanding than we do because they're at about oh, level five, whereas you, 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 uh, you get the grey teachers, the tall greys like Maris and Oris who work with us, they're right up there, they, they work with the angels, you know, they're up at about level eight. So yes, they have a much, much broader understanding of it than we do because they can access, you know, say 70 or 80 percent of their conscious awareness. So they're much more aware. Do they have a sense of humor? Do they laugh? Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> yes. That's one of the lovely things about being up on the ship. Everyone has such a lovely sense of humor. We all tease each other. We all have great fun up there. Play jokes on each other. Um, but it's never vicious teasing. It's always just very loving. What do they think of human beings? Some are nice and benevolent and good people. Others are mean and murderers and horrible. What do they think of us? Yeah, um, humans have a little bit of a puzzle to the grave um, because of the fact that they, I think, Monsignor Balducci, you know, the one who was the ex the American, I always remember he quoted that the Earth humans must be fairly low on the, on the you know, the, the human the to use that terminology because they, they know good but they can still do evil. Um, again, the Greys are very understanding. They understand that people who, who act out negative behavior are coming from fear. That's the bottom line. Um, That's the person who's acting through unconditional love doesn't need to be that way. All, all the bullying and things that goes on in schools and work situations, it's all based in fear. And if you look into their background, there's usually a very, very unhappy family background, child abuse or something like that. So um, the higher um, off-planet beings understand that. So, you know, they, they don't, they're not judgmental, they don't judge, but they can see that 
where the negative behaviour is coming from and warmongering and things like that. You know, it's all about control and fear down here. In your book, An Interview with an Alien, um, this is Matilda McElroy, talks about yeah. the, talking to a E.C. survivor named, uh, was it R.L.? L. 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 Do you A-I-R-L. Believe, A-I-R-L. L. I think it's pronounced. Do you believe that story? Well, as I say, um, I think it's very, very loosely based on truth, because I know that there was a survivor from the crash, um, but there's so many inconsistencies in the story, I tend to think there's been hijacked for disinformation purposes. Um, it, it's interesting because Bon Spencer, who wrote the original book, never actually met Mrs. McElroy face to face. She was only a voice over the phone, and she sent him all these documents. Now, my immediate thought was, how in the name of heaven would she have got those documents out? I mean, you know, the, the, um, the security that came down over the Roswell thing was just incredible. But a couple of people have said, oh, well, she might have, you know, she might have got them out. But there's just, there's so many, just, um, you know, um, how can I say, disparities in the story. There's a couple of parts where um, the ETL contradicts itself. Mm-hmm. Um, there's wrong terminology used that the graves don't use. So I think it's based very loosely on truth, but there's a lot of disinformation. And it happened, of course. Injected. It happened 74 years ago, so I would guess Matilda is no longer with us. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And with it goes, you know, gosh, so many people have passed away who were great investigators, Stanton Friedman, people like that. And we oh, were, yes, and I noticed on Facebook the other day Dr. Leo Sprinkles passed. Yes, yes, what a great person oh, he so was. so sad. We were in, in contact with each other. He's such a beautiful soul. Judy, where do you take this next for you? What? Sorry? What do you What do you do next with all of this? Uh, <laughs> well, well, certainly be keeping on with that podcast. Um, I, I have a feeling that this closure will come. Funnily enough, I stayed up last night to watch um, a show on TV uh, about how um, in Washington they're starting to come out a bit more about UFOs. A little bit. Um, a little bit. By the Navy and things. They're starting to take it more seriously. So I think that probably this closure will come out sometime. Let's talk a little bit more about that, Judy. We're going to take a break. We'll come back and talk about disclosure. And also we'll take phone calls in your final hour on Coast to Coast AM. Find out more about tonight's guest. Log on to coasttocoastam.com. Blackout have become a regular part of life here in California. A loss of power to your home can threaten your health or your safety. A loss of power to your business means loss of revenue. And whether you're a homeowner or a business owner, blackouts are a problem. The solution is Duffy Power. Duffy's stellar reputation comes from keeping Southern California homes and business operations running without interruption 24-7-365. To protect your home or your business from the next power outage, go to DuffyPower.com, DuffyPower.com. As parents, we've done everything we can to keep our kids safe, happy, and healthy during this pandemic. From finding the best face masks, to making sure their hands are clean. And now we have the best tool to help keep them even safer. The most important thing we can do is vaccinate our kids to protect them against COVID-19. Vaccines have been proven safe and effective for children 5 and up. Talk to your child's doctor or visit myturn.ca.gov to find a vaccine near you. Brought to you by the California Department of Public Health. I'm avoiding the chaos of Black Friday by having someone else do my shopping. So, Mom, here's my list. And now, the top five reasons to visit Morongo. Number five. Feather is a fortune. Just earn 500 points on your rewards card, and you're guaranteed to win up to $100 in cash or a free flashlight. Wednesdays and Thursdays, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Number four. Game day giveaway. You can win a meal or even concert tickets when you watch football. Sundays and Thursdays at Sideline Bar. Three. Thanksgiving essential giveaway. Get a healthy air fryer.
Jr., will you earn 500 points on your rewards card, the 22nd or 23rd? And the number two. We'll flash up to $100 in your game of pot with any football team scores, Sundays, Mondays, and Thursdays in the poker room. And the number one reason. Relax on Thanksgiving and leave the fun to us. To order your seat, call 866-234-7006. Morongo Casino Resort and Spa. Morongo, good times. The more you know, the easier it is to avoid the idiots around you. KFI and KOST HD2, Los Angeles, Orange County. Happy Friday. You made it through the week. for your morning wake-up call. Here's Jennifer Jones Lee. Happy Friday. KFI AM 640 live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. What a foggy morning. Uh, kind of creep show-ish this morning. Not Halloween, but you know, we'll take it. It's fall. We've got to get into this kind of weather. And it's cooler. This weekend's going to stay relatively cool. A little bit warmer on Sunday with possibly some Santa Anas coming in. So just don't be surprised by that. But looks like we're easing into our cooler weather now. Here's what's just ahead on your Friday wake-up call. Two kids from Tennessee safely can return to their families because a woman spotted their alleged kidnapper in Dana Point. Police in Santa Rosa, Northern California, say the kidnapping of that 15-year-old girl. Remember that story we were all over yesterday morning? You probably saw the child abduction Amber Alert signs on your way to work yesterday. Apparently, that whole thing was a prank. I'll tell you about that. And gas prices up again in L.A. County. I'll shoot the messenger. We're now at 4.69 a gallon in L.A. County. I'll give you the overall gas price in California in just a little bit. 505, we'll talk with ABC's Jim Ryan. Still no verdict in the Kyle Rittenhouse trial, but there were a couple of very interesting developments yesterday. So we'll go over both of those when we talk with Jim in just a few minutes. Let's start with some of these stories coming out of the KFI 25, 24, 25 hours? 24 hour newsroom. A $10,000 reward has been offered to catch the person who killed a man and injured the man's girlfriend in Hacienda Heights. The man and his girlfriend were parked at an overlook on Turnbull Canyon Road. It's dark up there. It's not a well-lit area. Lieutenant Chuck Calderero says overnight May 20th, Alfonso Guzman Jr. was shot. He died on scene. Calderero says they're looking for a white or Hispanic man who was wearing a ball cap and has a tattoo under his right eye. Guzman's mother spoke yesterday. <laughs> Captain Joe Mendoza interprets. He didn't deserve to be murdered. He had two minor children and that uh, his children asked for him and asked when he's coming home. Gregory Tejano. Well, two children from Tennessee can safely return home because a woman spotted their alleged kidnapper in Dana Point. I have children of my own, and I would want somebody to do the same. Julia Bonin says she thought she recognized Jacob Clare, his three-year-old son, and 16-year-old niece from Amber Alert photos. It was pretty much the same image. She was holding the little boy's hand, and he had a shovel in his other hand. OC Sheriff Don Barnes says Bonin did the right thing while not putting herself in danger. It's not very often we get to come back on the news and say, hey, guess what, we caught him. That's a really good feeling. Barnes said yesterday Claire was arrested peacefully. The man disappeared with his son last week. His niece disappeared a few days later. At the OC Sheriff's Department, Corbin Carson, KFI News. All right, the other Amber Alert that we were doing yesterday morning. Cops in Santa Rosa now in Northern California say the kidnapping of a 15-year-old girl pulled into a minivan in a parking lot was a prank. Investigators say the guy who grabbed the teen on Wednesday was her boyfriend who took her on a surprise trip to L.A. An Amber Alert was issued yesterday to find the team. An ex-volunteer reserve captain with the Orange County Sheriff's Department has been charged with defrauding the State Workers' Compensation Program of $17 million. If convicted, he could be sentenced to 16 years in prison. The man owns a company in Costa Mesa that provides licensed security guards, and he had been a Sheriff's Reserve officer since 1993. Lancaster, Palmdale, Studio City, and Santa Clarita are among 10 communities in L.A. County that have the highest rates of new COVID-19 infections. Public Health Director Barbara Ferrer says they all have above-average vaccination rates, so her department is studying the data to find out what's driving the higher case rates. 
she says countywide, 73% of people are fully vaccinated. Now, if you want to get your booster shot, the My Turn COVID-19 vaccine appointment website has been updated to allow people in California to sign up to get a booster shot. Adults scheduling a booster appointment on the site have to confirm that they meet the requirements to get the shot. Officials are warning people in SoCal about West Nile virus. Coachella Valley Mosquito and Vector Control District's Tammy Gordon says with mosquitoes recently testing positive for the virus in Laquita, the virus could pop up in other parts of SoCal. Which is why you should know that there is a risk. And particularly, if you're over the age of 50 or have an immune compromised system, you need to take extra precaution while you're outdoors and remember to wear that repellent. Officials say 1 in 150 people who get the virus will have to go to the hospital. They say 101 human cases of the virus have been found in California this year. Blake Trolley, KFI News. When we come back, we will talk with ABC's Jim Ryan. Still no verdict in the Kyle Rittenhouse trial in Wisconsin, but a couple of key points did come up yesterday, including one media outlet getting tossed from the trial. I'll tell you why. Right now, TGIF right back at you to, in response to your email, Natalia <laughs> I love you, Jen. In 25 hours of news, I don't That's know where that came from this I don't care. If any station in Southern California or the world was going to be doing 25-9 news, it would be KFI. <laughs> so let's go with it. I'm let's totally go. down for that. That's the, that's the new slogan of KFI. I'm yeah. in. I'm down. I'm totally down. I'm checking All the right. drive, Jen. What's up on the night, anyway? <laughs> on the westbound side, as you're coming through the Riverside area, from before Tyler, going to be passed before you into the Corona area as you make your way toward McKinley. Looks pretty decent until you're getting past the 15 forward about Main Street, and that will be a little sluggish again for you to make your way towards Surface Club. Uh, Pass is going for the westbound on the 91. That's right around Green River, and then continuing your drive through the Santana Canyon, New Oberlin, and Anaheim Hills. As you make way towards the 55, all looks like a pretty decent drive. Encountering something slowing down your drive, town 250 on the cell phone. Keyword is KFI traffic. Westbound side of the 22 looks like it's actually not super clear on the details, but it does look like you've got quite a few lanes taken away on the westbound side of the 22. Looks like that's going to be as you make way toward about Pastor, and that's going to be still going for the drive out of the Orange Crush for the 5, 57, and 42 split. KFI in the sky helps get there faster. I'm Nick Pauly Okini. 5.06 on your wake-up call. Let's say good morning to ABC's Jim Ryan. So still no verdict in the Kyle, Kyle Rittenhouse trial yesterday. But, Jim, a couple of key things did come up yesterday. This trial is just the one that just keeps giving. It really is, yeah. I mean, the deliberations have been going for three days now. There were no notes passed out from the jury yesterday to the judge. Uh, the only question that came out was at the very end as he was releasing the jury for the day. And he said, if you have any questions, one of the jurors asked if she could take home the 36-page jury instructions that the judge had given to them. Uh, the judge thought about it for a minute and said, okay, I guess so, but don't show it to anybody. Uh, don't share it and don't talk about uh, the, the case with anyone uh, except in the jury room. So they were allowed to do that. That was the only question that came yesterday. Uh, the judge is being very deferential to this jury and, and uh, telling them, you set the schedule here and uh, we'll see what happens next. Yeah, and I noticed the defense attorney, he appeared hesitant about letting the jurors take home that book. He was said, I'm afraid it's going to be the old dictionary game, and they start defining words and things like that outside research. That's my concern. Yeah, you're watching this thing again. Man, that's the <laughs> finer detail there that uh, came out yesterday. You're right, the defense had a problem with it, uh, but they you know, didn't lodge a formal complaint or a for formal objection. And, uh, and in fact, the jury was allowed to take home that uh, booklet, in other words. I am a court nerd. If I get into a trial, I get into a trial. Okay, one of the other things yesterday was MSNBC getting thrown out of the courtroom. Tell us what happened and all this went down, because it's not actually what happened in the courtroom. Right, exactly. No, it's, hap it's what happened on the street the night before on Wednesday. Uh, the jury is, they're, they're being sent home every night. They're not sequestered. They leave the courthouse in an unmarked bus, and the windows are, are blocked out so that the jury... A, can't look out at the protesters and, and be influenced by that, and B, so the people can't see in and learn the uh, identities of those jurors. So the, the bus pulling away and, and heading to whatever location it is, I don't know where it goes, don't really care where it goes, but someone apparently was trying to follow that bus, was pulled over for running a red light. So that person, the driver, identified himself as working for MSNBC, said he was under the direction of someone, a, a, a supervisor in New York. And, uh, and the NBC then, the parent company, issued a statement later saying that's a freelancer. He had not been told to photograph or to try to make contact with the jurors. It didn't deny that he had been asked to follow the bus. 
you know, possibly for booking reasons after the trial is over, just to see where they go, that kind of thing. But the, the, the judge was serious. Bruce Schrader says no more MSNBC, not just in the courtroom, but in the whole courthouse. So MSNBC can't even go in and use the bathroom now. <laughs> so, oh, but, uh, my God. NBC itself is a different matter, but MSNBC, they've been told they can't come out of the courthouse. So is the, uh, essentially then any, I guess, um, interviews or anything that they get would have to be outside the courthouse from attorneys who come out or something like that. Yeah, well, there was nothing really to be had from inside the courthouse anyway, you know, because sure. nobody's talking, nobody, the, the attorneys are not giving interviews. All you really have is, you know, protesters outside, and then what we see during the court day yesterday, that was nothing. Uh, you know, they aren't, this, the trial is being televised or it's being offered to television, it's being streamed online by different outlets, and uh, so there's just not a lot that to be had inside the courthouse anyway. All right, Jim, thank you so much. I am sure we will talk again Monday. All right, Jim, see you. All right, see you later. ABC's Jim Ryan. Okay, so I'm a court nurse. So I love this kind of stuff. And I'm fascinated when I can talk about it with Handel and Wayne because they actually know what they're talking about. I'm just the outsider looking in, and I can pick their brains about the questions, and, oh, it's, it's just good. All right, another court case that we're watching closely. Closing arguments are set to start Monday in the trial of three men in Georgia charged with killing Ahmad Arbery last year. Testimony in the trial wrapped up yesterday with accused killer Travis McMichael telling prosecutors that he was complaining about people breaking the law right before chasing Arbery down. He said, hell, I'm getting that way. I did say that. He said, have to make an example out of somebody. He said, that's right. Hope y'all catch the vermin, correct? I did. That's the prosecutor talking to McMichael. McMichael also admitted that Arbery didn't say anything, show a weapon, or threaten him before McMichael pointed his shotgun at him. All right, gas prices in L.A. County now are at four sixty nine a gallon. Lucky us. Now, it looks like that is for self-serve regular unleaded. That's just 1.4 cents under the record high that was set back in October 2012. This is the 12th day in a row that prices have risen, and in California, the average price of a gallon of unleaded gas in California across the state is $4.70, just like it was yesterday. Well, the feds say about $139 million will go to police departments around the country. The Justice Department says the money is part of a grant program that would create job openings for more than 1,000 new officers says the money is meant to help reduce crime and encourage more community policing. New research shows there's been a 6.5% drop in undergraduate enrollment in California, particularly at community colleges. The National Student Clearinghouse Research Center says community college enrollments are down by more than 10% since the fall of 2020. The center says the decline in enrollments is mostly due to students deciding to get a job instead of going to school. Well, President Biden says it's important for the U.S. to rebuild a strong relationship with Canada and Mexico that was damaged during the Trump administration. He met with leaders of both countries at the White House yesterday to talk about immigration and other important issues. We have to manage the challenges of unprecedented migration in our hemisphere and to take on an equity that continues to deny opportunity to too many people. The summit was the first meeting between the three leaders since 2016. Well, in San Diego, young kids from Mexico are being bussed across the border to get vaccinated against COVID-19. It's part of a pilot program being run by people in San Diego to vaccinate about 450 kids between 12 and 17. San Diego County has donated doses of the Pfizer vaccine because Mexico apparently doesn't have enough vaccines for teens. Well, our no-burn ban has been extended. The South Coast Air Quality Management District says because of a forecast of high air pollution, burning wooden doors and outdoors is banned for most of SoCal through midnight tonight. The ban covers non-desert areas of L.A., Riverside, and San Bernardino counties and all of Orange County. The original ban had been in effect until 11.59 last, uh, last night. Yeah. <laughs> The most famous mice in the world have celebrated 
their 93rd birthday, and they look amazing, if I do say so. Mickey and Minnie made their first appearance in the black and white short film Steamboat Willie in 1928. Since then, the pair has gone on to become the most iconic characters of the Disney brand. All right, we come back. It is your Biz Bites this morning. Oh, I've got a lot to squeeze in. CBS says it's going to close 900 stores. I'll tell you why. Also, some big name investors are getting into the shapewear industry. I'll tell you what they're investing in. I've got coffee talk for you and how inflation is going to hit our morning liquid gold, which I'm so not okay with. Amazon is coming up with Starbucks. Sort of feel like that was, it's like a relationship destined to happen. And finally, I owe all of you an apology. At least I owe your taste buds an apology. Wasn't my fault, but I gave you some information yesterday that might have made you salivate a little bit, and then you might have gone to try and get the thing that I told you about, and then you couldn't. And I apologize for that. I'll explain what happened with McDonald's yesterday and the reason why you might not have been able to get that 63 cent McMuffin after all. Nick Pagliacini, it hurt me last night when I read that story. I was going to say, wait, hold on, what? Yeah, yeah, I told everybody they could go get a 63 cent McMuffin yesterday, right. which yeah. was the plan, yeah. and then when they went probably to go try and get it, it uh -huh. didn't happen. Not my fault, it was on McDonald's, but still, I was okay. the messenger. Makes wow. me feel bad. Okay, that's unfortunate on that. I know I got my free red cup from Starbucks yesterday, so oh, at least I got did. something out of it. Yeah. Because yesterday I, was red cup day where they were giving one, so if you ordered a holiday drink, you got yes. the cup? Correct. So okay. I sent, I sent Brian to go. I, he's, he's more the holiday drink guy than I. I'm the black coffee guy. <laughs> I love that you said your husband, you're like, honey, right. it's okay. Let's go get some Starbucks this morning. I hey, need this free cup. You can go drink the drink. <laughs> <laughs> if you fly, I'll buy and exactly. drink. Okay, Let's great. <laughs> All right, I need a picture of that up on Twitter, if you would, okay, please. Don't worry. I will definitely take care of that for you, without a question. All right, and sounds also, good. <laughs> and also taking, uh, taking care of the driving, Garden Grove, Jen. Uh, got problems for you on the westbound side of the 22. This is going to be near after. It's the three right lanes that are shut down. Looks like you are able to get through. It's going to be a busy one coming out of the Orange Crush on the 22 westbound. Uh, whether you have 557 and 22 split, that will be still going toward Hastur and further west on the 22. Not too bad as you continue further through Garden Grove and Westminster towards the 405 Murr. So pretty heavy for you. You know the drill as you get out of the Inland Empire heading toward Orange County. Westbound side of the 91. Heavy stretches of 20 for you from before Tyler and that domain and case for the 241 Old Road. And uh, checking out your drive as you make your way along the 5. Northbound side starting to see delays as you make way through no walk. KFI in the sky helps get you there faster. I'm in Colorado Keys. This report is sponsored by Indeed.com. Avoid the gridlock of having to sort through hundreds of resumes to find great people. Those are fun. Into the chairs And interview candidates all in one place. To find your next great hire, visit Indeed.com slash credit. <laughs> This is Chris Collinsworth. Here's what's trending on the iHeart Sports Network, presented by DraftKings. Shohei Otani was unanimous in vote as the American League's most valuable player. The fans celebrating the two-way superstar are lighting up the Tokyo Tower in Angel Colors. LAFC is parting ways with head coach Bob Bradley after four seasons. And President Joe Biden is considering a U.S. diplomatic boycott at the Beijing Olympics. The boycott would be to protest China's human rights record. I'm a senior with Download the DraftKings app and use the code SPORTS to get a free shot at millions of dollars up for grabs this week with your first deposit. Minimum of $5 deposit required. Eligible for the first time. We survived winter in Siberia on the Oceans by literally eating dirt. Hello, I'm John Aquarium, owner of Ruder Hero Plumbing. I can't imagine yeah, living like that, but yeah, dirt, my mom told me, had nothing. We are so fortunate to live in the world's richest country, but every day children go hungry. At Ruder Hero Plumbing, we want to help, so we're bringing back our Hero Help program. Before COVID-19, we saw the homeless, adopted families, Eat. and cleaned the base. But our most popular program was handing out canned goods. Ruder Hero will once again hand out food with no questions asked. Simply pull up in your car and we'll help your family. Go to RuderHero.com slash Hero Help for the date and location. If you What's want to up? donate canned goods, call us at 866 for a Ruder Hero plumbing location nearest you. Thank you. Everybody. Oh, 
Wealth is about more than making money. It's about making the most of life's possibilities. At Edelman Financial Engine, we believe that's key to taking your wealth potential to the next level. That's why we model over 38,000 investments across 17 asset classes monthly so your strategy is current and focused on the goals ahead. That's why we don't use cookie cutter strategies, but a comprehensive, tax-cost-effective, and personalized approach to wealth planning. That's why our advice is powered by a sophisticated investment management approach that's been awarded 12 U.S. patents. And that's why our experts help clear you every facet of your financial life. Wealth planning, investment management, estate planning, insurance, and more. For more ways to take your wealth potential to a new level, to to schedule a free, no obligation meeting with your son. Reach us at HP3 TransYuffie or visit TransYuffie.com. Do you need a new water heater? Water heater is mm -hmm. over 53 years in business offers low prices, quality, same-day service, and 0% deferred interest financing. Visit waterheatersonly.com.